Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And today we're going to ask the question, why do we drive ground rods at detached garages? All right, and this is what we're talking about here. Let's say that electrical has been good to me. And this is an actual photo of my house right here, by the way. This is an actual photo right here of my house. And I have built me a man cave over here. We're going to call it a garage, call it a doghouse, call it whatever you want. And let's imagine that over here on my main structure, when we built the home, we have our meter disconnect combo right here. We drove a ground rod here. And of course, we're good electricians. We're going to drive our second ground rod apart. We're going to connect them six feet apart. We're going to put them together. And then we're going to run our copper wire here to our meter disconnect combo. And we are done for this structure. Now let's imagine sometime down the road, I want to wire my doghouse and I run my conduit in the ground. I want to put a four wire feeder and I want to install my sub panel here. Now I've taught you in those previous videos that we must establish a grounding electrode system here. Could be a footing ground, could be any one of the methods that are listed there in 250.52, I believe it is. So, but in this case, I've drove to chose to drive two ground rods. But the question is, why did I have to drive two ground rods here if I have four wires coming from the building? So I've ran four wires from the building. I've separated my grounds and neutrals. There should be no danger or no harm, you know, of, you know, objectional current because I've got my neutrals and my ground separated. So let's answer the question, why? And to answer the question of why we drove the grounding electrode system over here on this building, it'll be the same answer for why we drove one over on this building. So on the main structure of this home, we were required to drive the grounding electrode system. In this case, we chose two ground rods. Whether you use a footing ground or any of the other methods, that's fine. But the reason that we drove it is really twofold. The first one is for static electricity. So whether it is coming from the utility or just from the earth or any other you know, place that can impose static electricity, that is going to be one of the number one reasons that we drive ground rods in the first place. The second reason is going to be because of things like lightning strikes we need a place for that electricity to dissipate. Now, if there is a fault on a current in a circuit, that fault current is gonna wanna flow back to the source. It's not going to use the ground rods primarily. Current is going to take any and all paths, yes, but it's gonna take the path of least resistance. So let's imagine inside this home, we had an electrical fault. That fault current is gonna wanna ride back on any and all paths back to the distribution center, then from there, it's going to want to ride on the path of least resistance back to the source. Let's imagine that the transformer is over here. It's not that fault current is not going to ride on the ground rods in order to try to clear the fault or, you know, try to get back to the earth because the current is trying to get from this point back to the source. Now it could, some of the current could flow on the grounding system, but it would only be flowing through the ground, trying to get back to the ground rod over here at the transformer. So just to recap, ground rods are not to clear faults. They are to clear static electricity, and they're also to clear lightning strikes and things like that. Now a lightning strike essentially is trying to go back to the earth. It's not trying to go back to the source because the source is essentially, however you want to look at it, is coming from the earth. So the lightning strike it, when it hits a home or the utility pole or anywhere in that line downstream, it is trying to go to earth. And that's why we have to establish this earth connection right here in order to clear that out. If not, it would fry our equipment. It would fry the system. It could burn things up. Lots of nasty things could happen. Well, the same thing is happening over here at this building right here. So we've ran our four wires over, we've separated our grounds and neutrals, but the question is, are we at any less danger of static electricity or lightning strikes? And the answer is no, we're not. So we definitely need to establish a grounding electro system at this separate structure to perform the same functions. So I hope this added a little bit of value to you. And my bargain is, is that you will in turn turn around and add value to others and we can multiply the value. I am the electrical code coach and I'm praying for you today. I want to see you win. And if there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. 
This video is brought to you by electricalexamcoach.com, offering the number one electrical exam prep series. We have the pro version with the unlimited testing center and the free version without the unlimited testing center. We have interactive flashcards. We have full online lessons with videos and practice tests at the end. We also have unlimited practice testing on every topic that you can imagine for exam prep. This program comes with 100% full support from us here at electrical exam. ExamCoach.com. We just want to see you win. Let's get to it.